particles like these so fast and cool. Bombs out of mechanics and pipe up some cold words But no one can deny the fact that quantum theory works In the last video we touched on solid state devices and more specifically your solid state diodes and your solid state transistor and in this video we're going to cover a couple of the thermionic devices and compare them to solid state devices in terms of the difference between the two. So what I'll talk about first is your ther thermionic diode. So your thermionic diode and how that works compared to your, th your solid state diode. So your thermionic diode is basically a circuit. Right? So you have a circuit, electrons flow from your positive terminal to your negative terminal, so the electrons will be flowing this way. And we have that circuit connected to a cathode and an anode. A cathode is your negatively charged electrode and your anode is your positively charged electrode. Which means your electrons will jump from the cathode to the anode in an ideal situation. You also have an evacuated glass tube. What that means, evacuated means left, something's left, something's been f removed. And what's actually been removed is there's no air, so all the air has been removed. It's more or less a vacuum, right? So it's a vacuum. We also call these vacuum tubes. So there's a vacuum tube in between the cathode and the anode, and there's this heater filament. And this heater filament will produce obviously heat, as the name suggests. And you can say you can see all the same stuff here in this picture. We've got the anode, which is a metal part, the cathode, which is a metal piece as well. We've got a heater on top. We have this glass tube, this evacuated glass tube. We've got these base pins. All right, so what happens is this heater filament heats up, right, so it will produce heat, and it will actually heat up these the cathode, and it will heat it up to have electrons being removed because of heat. Right, so e electrons will gain enough energy. The reason why is because electrons will gain that energy through being heated up, and that will make them excited. That will make them into more or less free electrons, and these free electrons will then move from the negative terminal, right, these free electrons will move, and they move, will move towards the positive terminal. The reason why they can move is because of that vacuum tube, which allows them to go from the cathode to the anode through, space, through air itself, or through empty air, through evacuated air, the glass tube. So these electrons will go from the cathode to the anode, and it will be one direction, so th these will be going into that one direction, and it will go to the positive terminal. So a thermionic device, or a diode, is basically a mechanism that allows us to make sure that your electrons are only flowing, or your current is only flowing in one direction. It's only flowing in one direction. It will go from the negative to your positive terminal, just like in your solid state diode. But the difference between a solid state and a thermionic diode is we talked about the solid state diode. This was made out of semiconductors. This was made out of semiconductors that were doped with either with both. So we had both the p-type and the n-type semiconductors. So we doped with group three and group five elements respectively. So these semiconductors were doped, and they had voltage being applied to them. We had the positive terminal being applied. In this case, this is the forward bias. So we had the positive terminal being connected to the p type and the negative terminal being connected to the n-type and what that allows to do is as soon as voltage was applied, so as soon as there was a potential difference being applied that allowed the electrons to flow this way and the positive holes to flow the opposite way and what that meant eventually would mean that this electrical field which built up beforehand was broken down and that meant that the actual electrons could now pass again and we could have electricity or current flowing in one direction from negative to the positive terminal, which was the same thing in the thermionic diode, but it's just how they achieved it which was different, right? So in the example of a semiconductor or a solid state diode, this was done with semiconductors, most specifically your P and your N types, uh, whereas in a thermionic device, it was done with the heater filament, which was releasing electrons, which then passed from the negative from the cathode negative terminal to the anode, the positive terminal, or positive electrode, and then it completed its circuit. Right? So that's the main difference. It's not what they did, the, the actual mechanism of what it was doing, 
making things move in one direction was the same, it's just how it was achieved was different. One through the help of additioning, of adding heat, whereas the other one was just using semiconductors. So that was comparing two, and the other two that we compare is your thermionic triode, thermionic triode, to your transistor. Right, so these are the other ones we're comparing. So your transistor is your equivalent of your thermionic triode in terms of its function. So we basically have the same buildup. We have a evacuated class tube, we have an anode, positive term, uh, positive electrode and a cathode negative electrode. We've got the heater filament which will eject electrons because of heat. These electrons will, will move towards this direction and the circuit itself. So that's all the same. The only difference is we have a grid. So this grid here, which is meant to be shown by these dashed lines, this is a metal grid and this metal grid can be charged with either a negative voltage or a positive voltage. If we apply a negative voltage that means that these electrons, they're trying to go from the actual cathode to the anode. These electrons will be blocked. Negative voltage will block them from going there, right? so nothing will happen. There's no current that will flow. No current flows when we have negative voltage. Whereas if we have a positive voltage, right? if this grid here, this grid here has a positive voltage, that means that these guys won't just go they will be accelerated, it'll be going even faster. Right? So if you have a positive voltage, so you have a positive voltage, that means we have amplification. Amplification. That might sound familiar because I talked about transistors, what they can do. They can either act as an amplifier or they can act as a switch, so we can switch stuff off and on. And that's the same with the thermionic triode. When it has no current, when it has a negative voltage, it's like a switch. Things can be switched on and off because the negative voltage means that no electricity can flow. Whereas if we have a positive voltage, it will do the opposite. There will be an amplification of the actual signal, which means the signal will be bigger than it was beforehand. Right? So thermionic triad in that sense works the same as the transistor because the transistors are also there to amplify and I cover kind of how roughly how it works in the last video to either amplify or to act as a switch. So the mechanism is the same. The difference is kind of how they're set up. The major difference between that is your thermionic triode works with your heat, so the same as we talked about beforehand. Your heater, we're producing heat energy. That heat energy will make the electrons move through an evacuated glass tube from the cathode electrode to the anode electrode and thereby completing the circuit. And the grid was there in between. Whereas for the transistor, we had these two circuits that allowed us to do the same function, but just how they did it was different, right? So the same principle, but just a different kind of approach between thermonic triad and your solid state equivalent. So this is really a solid state equivalent. And obviously, I'm talking about all this because Dopo itself says describe the difference between solid state and thermionic devices. So we're comparing them and discuss why solid state devices replace thermonic devices. So first, I just talked about the differences, so describe the difference between solid state and thermionic devices. The main thing for that, you should know that the thermionic devices generally operate on heat energy, where they help, the heat energy helps eject electrons from the cathode, and then move to the anode, and then complete the circuit. Whereas in, in the actual solid state devices, it's semiconductors that do that same job. Right? So semiconductors and solid state devices, whereas uh, heat filaments and heaters in the actual thermionic triodes and diodes. But the second part is I'm quickly going to cover the second part as well, which is discuss why solid state devices replaced thermionic devices. So we used to have first we had thermionic devices, now we have solid state devices. And the reason why are as following. First of all, size wise, as right, so size, thermionic devices are much larger. They're quite big in comparison, relatively speaking. Where solid space solid state devices are much smaller. And for example, if you want to make a microchip right, so, or your microprocessors, we want to have millions, billions of transistors fitting on a tiny microchip. So we want to have small. Small is good when it comes to transistors because they have a huge role when it comes to microchips and microprocessors. So one of the reasons why we replaced thermal devices with solid state devices is because solid state devices were quite a lot smaller, which allowed us to make smaller electronics. That's why, for example, our computers are so small because of your small solid state transistors. Also, we've got your reliability. 
your liability. Well, thermal ion devices, they can often burn out. They have these heater filaments, right? These heater filaments, which often break down and they can just burn out and then have to be replaced. So they're not that reliable compared to your solid state devices, which don't have don't work with a heater, they have don't have that problem. So they can just keep going and, and they're much more reliable than your thermionic devices. We also have, for example, stability. Because thermionic devices they work with a glass tube, right? So the glass tube, you can imagine a glass tube can quite easily break. So when a glass tube here breaks, the whole transistor is uh, sorry, the thermionic diode or triode is basically broken. So it's fragile, you know, it's it breaks easily. Whereas a solid state device is much more robust, its structure is very strong and it will actually withstand quite a bit of problem, quite a bit of damage. There's no glass tube involved when it comes to solid state devices, so overall much more stable as well. And also quite important is the energy demands. We have for the thermal devices, we have, we have to use a high voltage to get current to flow through the actual circuit. And there's also lots of heat being lost, so that heat means wasted energy, right? So if we have heat being lost, that's wasted energy. So it's not as efficient and has high voltage requirements. Whereas on the other hand, solid state devices have low voltage requirements and they're quite efficient. So again, two more reasons why solid state devices replace thermal devices. And these four were the main ones you should know. So for the dot point, describe the difference. That was the first part, describe the difference between solid state devices and thermal devices and discuss why solid state devices replace thermal devices. The first part to describe the difference, that was all about you know how they set up, how they're set up, you know, that one uses glass tubes and heater filaments, whereas the other one uses semiconductors. That was that part. And the differences was you know your size, reliability, stability, energy demands, the stuff we covered in the last part. That was the second part of that dot point. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.